Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 279 for Monday, November 9th, 2020. Folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians, or at least musicians who are trying to be working, <laughs> musicians who wish we were working, musicians who used to work, musicians who will work again here. Will in, work again. There it is. Here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Napomo, California, it's Paul Kent. Paul, I was a working musician this, this weekend on Friday night. This is getting to be a theme, man. Almost the last several weeks, you've been able to start with that. Yeah. Well, again, I will say this is going to be the last one. It. We are currently experiencing summer in November here. On Saturday, it was 77 degrees. I was in the woods in like shorts and a t-shirt, hiking in the woods, not lost. Uh, I mean, sort of lost, <laughs> intentionally lost. Yeah. Not, but, not philosophically. In the not woods. philosophically lost. Yeah, although maybe I was, I don't know. Uh, but uh, it, yeah, so it's definitely, you know, it's going to continue, I think through Wednesday or Thursday and then a big front comes in and, you know, back to, back to our regularly scheduled fall. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, there was an opportunity to play, uh, uh, at Gary's restaurant, Gary is the, uh, one who organizes Uptown Celebration. It's his band, right? He's the band leader of, the, of that band. It's easy mm -hmm. to say it. And they were gonna, they, they were planning on doing this with just two of the, there are three of them, keys, vocals, and, and guitar. And then they said, well, wait a minute. Gary said, wait a minute. It's going to be really nice out. So he called everybody else. Bass player couldn't make it. Um, but you know, he called me and he's like, do you want to do this with us? He's like, it'll be sort of low key. And, uh, you know, bring your cajon. Like that would be awesome. It would be a perfect vibe for this thing. I was like, yes, I'm in. But I said, you know, like the deal, you know, the deal with me is, you know, I, I don't want to be on stage with anybody that's not being tested. And I said, but I have the technology. I realized, you know, we're talking, this gig is happening in a matter of hours, you know, you know like nobody's going to be able to go out and schedule a test, at least not the way it works here. And so he's like, yeah, no problem. Bring the test. Well, one of the guys didn't get the message. Um, and it was what I got to experience was an interesting scenario where someone that's not like I'm so far on the other side of this because I've been being tested regularly for so long that I don't really think about what it's like to be tested for the first time. And 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 so it was it was definitely a retraining, compassionate moment when one of the guys showed up and was like, Hey, you know, I don't know if you got the memo. He's like, no, I've been sort of out of pocket all day. He's like, great. He's, he was surprised to see me there. Cause he, you know, he wasn't, I wasn't on the schedule initially. And, uh, and so he explained it to him and he, you know, he was very concerned. He took his test and, and then once his results were, were in, he was fine. But, but there is that, like, I, I totally, and I, and if I remember back, I felt the same way when I had my first test, that, that feeling of, wow, you know, I might find out I have the thing, it, it, you know, that, that is, that is Stressful. a real fear. Yeah. 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 And, and it was, and, and I mean, we worked it, we worked through it, but he was, you know, startled by this revelation and, and it, but it, you know, I mean, again, it wasn't, he wasn't against it. It was, it was just a weird vibe as, as we sort of worked through it together as a band and, and he was fine with it in the end. Like I said, once he, uh, once he knew he was negative, then he was like happy. He's like, woo, I'm negative, you know, but there is that fear of finding out, oh my gosh, like I have the thing. As I told him though, I said, none of us would be here if any of us thought we had it. Like this is just to confirm what we all already believe. None of us has done anything irresponsible in the last, you know, whatever, three or four days. Sure. Uh, you know, none of us would show up if we thought there was a, a decent chance that we had been exposed yeah. or whatever. And he's like, of course not, of course not. I'm like, right. And, and you know, so we talked through it, but it was, it was a good like I said, learning experience from a, a, a compassion standpoint to to be like, right, not everybody is, even if we all are in agreement on lots of things, not everybody's mindset about this, you know, particular thing is the same, um, at least not initially. So, but it was a great gig. It was a really good night, man. And Andy. it was, and it was one of those gigs I... I did not find out the set list until the end of the night, right? Like I, 
<laughs> it was just as we went through, I would occasionally be able to glance over and see what the next song was going to be. But uh, the, sh- the set list was not shared with me. And none of the so- most of the songs that we played were not on or are not on our normal like wedding set list. This was very as as things have to be right now is a very low key kind of thing. It was outdoors. Tables were, you know, six feet apart. Yes, but more like eight to 10 feet apart. So there, you know, there weren't that many people there and it was pretty low key kind of acoustic style vibe, although we rocked it out a little bit. But as always, Gary built a great set list. And this is one of his um, one of his several superpowers for and and the reason that that band works, because he understands like you play the songs that are going to work for the environment that you're in. But I got to play like like things like Closer to Home from Grand Funk. I'd never mm. played that song before. That, and that was great. Like, thankfully, the other guys knew these songs were coming. So they had learned them. I got to just like follow along. But um, Somebody's Baby by Jackson Brown and Dr. My Eye. Fun. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's just like fun tunes. Yeah. Exactly. Burn in Sky by Bad Company. I like I never thought I would play that song live. <laughs> you know, it took me a minute. They're like, I'm like, what song is this? And they kind of sang the drum groove to me. I'm like, Oh, I remember that song. Like, okay, <laughs> great way to open the second set. Brandy, that was a fun one to play. But anyway, we played that. Yeah, right. We did. Yeah, I, I, you guys hated me for pulling that song into the Macworld All Star in Boston. Band. In Boston, yep. yeah, it had like fourteen chords in it or something like that. So. <laughs> a lot. Of, it's too many. <laughs> I, I think your comment was Baker's dozen. So yeah, <laughs> but it was a fun gig. It was fun to like really rock out. You know, the, my my last few gigs have been theater gigs, Madhouse, and then and subbing for Nonsense, which are far more structured than what I just described. And so it was nice to just like sweat and rock out a little bit and just be loose, which was really, I mean, it was really good anyway. It was really good, especially because of COVID, but it was good for that band. We don't really get to be loose together when we play. It's always fairly yeah. structured, you know, for obvious reasons. So it was really good for us. Like our harmonies throughout the night really started to gel because we were okay listening. making mistakes and listening and yeah. right yeah exactly exactly yep well you know i think this is we started this conversation i think last week y- you know this is the great reset right this is um in many ways your band your scene your gear right yeah. this is you know a a strange period of time that everything is looked at anew you know and the you know the question is what will it look like when it opens up again, right? What will your local scene be like? I I was telling you down here where I've moved to seems to be very different from where I came from. seems like there's, I think the pay scale is going to be a little bit less. That's, you know, and again, it's closed. So it's hard, it's hard to, it's hard to really get into it, but I'm trying to talk to people, you know, you know, chat with people, you know, and just get a vibe from it. And it it seems like there's much more, there's less of a, of a scene scene of, you know, people over 30 going out, you know, for the express purposes, of listening to music, you know, that, that steady so pretty, gig my band had up fairly, I hate that. I hate saying fairly unique because it doesn't really work, but that was a fairly rare thing. I think that you had in that area where there was that, you know, the, the, the post, you know, the empty nester community going out and seeing music. I think that, that I think was, it was the empty nester and single late in life community. Right. The divorcee community or, or whatever it is <laughs> that leads to that. Well, I mean, right. Like that, that, that idea of, yeah. 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 I wonder if that's a, I wonder if that's an, an affluence related thing. I wonder if, mm. if wealthier areas are going to have that more. Or, you know, I don't know why, but I, you know, certainly where I came from was a, was a more affluent area, but that was a large part of what, you know, the, like my little town, you know, 27,000 people had two active dance live music clubs. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Especially if the median age is, you know, in the forties or whatever, like that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. If if that was, that was the audience and, you know, plus, you know, other smaller, you know, type things, but yeah, I, I mean, I think um, we're about to get to a place where, you know, what will scenes look like? Will there, I, you know, what did you say to me? that Like, you think it's going to be party like it's 1999 when, you know, when, when the world opens up again. I guess maybe now's a good time. We should back up a little bit, right? So we've had the election. There's going to be a change. 
Um, the incoming president seems very focused on COVID. Uh, we had an announcement today of a of a of a vaccine with ninety percent efficacy that they say they're going to distribute to everyone in the United States for free. Um, you know, there's a lot of things going on towards an effort to truly reestablish normal as opposed to, you know, currently what it's like is kind of like waiting it out. Well, you know? Yeah, we're, we're in we're in limbo right now. I mean, we've we've made it our I call it our new abnormal because I, I refuse to 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 call this normal for any length of time. Yeah, but but it, we have we have figured out a way of coping, you know, some areas better than others, some of us better than others at different times. Like, you, you know, I, I we're yeah, but all, generally all the coping is not financially sustainable, right? No, for anybody. no, 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 no. Yeah. yeah. You know, we got a, we got a good question from Fred that I want to, I want to introduce here a, because I think it, it's truly relevant to this conversation and B because we really love when you folks send in questions, really do feedback yeah. at giggabpodcast.com. So Fred says, uh, hey guys, I hope you're doing well. I listen religiously and find myself talking to you guys as if you're in the room with me. That's awesome. <laughs> That's the point, right? We're all in this together. He says, thanks for everything you do. I really enjoy the new gear talk portion of the show too. In any case, I thought it might be good for you to discuss what feels like the inevitable reset of the market. Here we are. Pre-COVID, I was playing five or six times a week and my pay was, let's say, X. Now it feels like there is some serious downward pressure on the standard rate for around the Boston area, somewhere around 70% of X. I'm wondering if this is going to carry through after COVID and would love to hear your opinions. Yeah, and, and so, I mean, that's, that's where we are here. I do, I think, and, and honestly, I think this would have happened regardless of who is our president going forward. I, I, I do think it's going to be party freaking central Whenever we're at the other side of this now, you know, does that happen in 2021? Does that happen in 2022? I'm not, I'm not smart enough to make that prediction. I, I, so I'll, I'll hedge my bets and say it's later than earlier, but, um, but I think when we're on the other side of this pandemic, whatever that looks like, people are going to want to get together. I think people, what I think what you had that I just called rare, in, you know, in, in the, you know, what, what, what is that called? The South Bay area, maybe mm -hmm. San Francisco. I, yeah. I think that that will become more common as people, you know, what did Mark Geiger call it? We're now we're in the quarantine economy, but we will be in the claustrophobia economy where everybody wants to get out of their houses. I, and I really think that that's going to happen at, at a great scale. And so, you know, the, the pricing thing that that Fred's talking about here, I think I think it could go two ways, but realistically, I think it's going to go both ways. You know, we're right now we're definitely seeing this downward pressure that's fueled by not many venues open, right, and not many opportunities to play that are safe and that fit all of the the various requirements that you as a band might have, and of course that health officials in your area have. Uh, but there's definitely that. Wait, there's a gig opportunity available. Okay, great. Is it safe? Like, does it check all the boxes we need to check? Great. I'm in. Let's go. And it's like, oh, by the way, what's it pay? Right? Like, it, it, it's, th there are other factors that are more, that are greater priorities right now. And one of them is, is there a gig to play? You know, yeah. and so I, I certainly felt that with myself where it's like, OK, yeah, we, we'll, we'll figure out the money thing. And I, and I agree with you, Fred. It's it's about 70 percent. You know, the theater stuff that I've been doing actually has remained at the same rate. Uh, but they're you know, they're getting um, paycheck protection program from the government. And they got, you know, their their grants and all of that stuff. So uh, so that's that's a little bit different of a scenario than say a, a you know a, a restaurant that can has outdoor seating that can have a band right it's a, it's just a different thing but i so, i do i think i think it's going to be party central and paul i think bands that know how to put on a good show are going to, for a for a large number of people and by large i mean you know not the 20 to 50 people that you might be able to get into a club you know small club if you can truly entertain 100 to 500 people I think and engage those 100 to 500 people. I think those bands are going to have the opportunity to make a lot more money than we used to. I think we're finally oh. going to break through the, you know, hundred dollar a man ceiling that has sort of existed mostly nationwide for bands yep. like that. I really do. But but you have to be good to get it. 
Like, I, but the opportunity will be there. Whereas prior, I don't think it was. All right. So a bunch of things for this. And, and, you know, I, I love your optimism and appreciate your optimism. <laughs> I think, you know, obviously that, that issue, well, actually let's, let's go all the way up to 10,000 feet. Right. Okay, yep. So looking down on the problem, um, uh, we, there's a venue in San Jose called the art boutique, really interesting venue. The front of it is a comic book store and the back of it is 150 seat, venue sounds great they have a great sound system in there the guy who owns it has been doing really eclectic things everything from kind of startup you know touring bands to some local stuff he, he's done big bands on that stage he's done americana he's done jazz he's done you know a, a fusion he, he, sure. it's a very eclectic you know and, and it's cool he was interviewed in an article in the san francisco chronicle last week uh and he was saying you know there's about 110 venues in the Bay area that are right on the edge. And he said, you know, if they don't come up with some kind of thing to, to, to tide us over, you know, I still have to pay my full rent, you know, as many of them do landlords are not, some are helping, some are not helping, right. you know, different situations, but you still got to pay your insurance. And, you know, there, there's things you got to do just to have the business. Right. He said, a lot of them will go. And don't expect a lot of them to be replaced by somebody else who, you know, the, the type of person who wants to have live music is often, a, you know, a really unique beast in the world. You know, the good venues are the ones where the owners really love live music. And, you know, especially if it's an economy that's in a recovery mode, his opinion was 110 could go um, if nothing happens for six more months and don't expect 110 to come back. So there may be some challenge to the venue scenes. And that, that seems to make a lot of sense to me. That's the part, you know, the economy has been crippled for a long time. And when it opens again, you know, what will it look like? I, I'm, I'm caught between different feelings about, you know, when you say, you know, roughly that hundred dollars, man, that's, that's, that's been a nationwide thing here. Remember that hundred bucks is the same thing. It was 40 freaking years ago. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and so it is the number, the number is the number, but you know, are musicians, you know, ready to just take gigs and and set things back even farther than that? You know, are, is fifty dollars just to help get the economy going again? You know, you're always got to be worried that once you lower the bar, it doesn't come up again, right? Totally. Once, right? Yeah. So there's there's that dynamic that's going to be going on. And remember, it's an interesting conversation. You would take that gig because it's time to get playing again. I would take that gig to get to playing, but I know a lot of people who over the course of time have been pretty stubborn about what, the, what they're willing to get off their couch or leave their house for is, are they more stubborn now or are they, you know, part of the solution, not part of the problem moving forward. So, so there's that. Um, I think, um, I think it's going to be a while and it, it's good to keep an eye on what, like when major tours start getting announced again, I, I don't know that, that the local music scenes are the, are the dog or the tail. You know what I'm saying? I don't know whether, whether people will start to feel comfortable and come out sooner locally, or it's when, you know, they go to, you know, their favorite artist starts touring again, that they really believe that we are safe and ready to go again. So I think it's going to be in the middle. I, I think it's, I think the place to watch, and there's a couple of reasons for this. Uh, the place to watch are the mid-size venues that at attract the what I'll call B or C level touring acts, right? So it's not your local thing where you can sort of work out like is happening in some places now. Like, all right, like this band is local. These people that are here are local. They're outside. They're distanced. Obviously, it's not as safe as being home and shut in your house. But, you know, psychologically, it's better for you. And so, you know, we we take that risk with safety precautions in place. Uh, that will, I think, continue to happen in pockets around, and I think it will increase in the spring just because of the weather, right? It's, but we're definitely going to, you know, it's going to tamp down now. Mm -hmm. But I, the the real reason, or one of the real reasons, I think that those mid sized venues are the ones to look at, is because it takes more. There's more at stake when you're touring a band around a country. So when that can start to happen. I think that's a really good sign. And when it continues to happen, that's a even better sign. You know, Mark Geiger, who I I think I just mentioned him, right? He's well, if I didn't, it, I, I, uh, I called out to him because he's the one that called the, 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 you know, the quarantine and claustrophobia economy. Well, he's formerly head of the, the talent agency WME. I think he, it was either 
Lollapalooza. Yeah, he helped create Lollapalooza. He's been in the music industry for a very long time. And he is he is seeing these venues shutter and he is going to a lot of these what I've called called mid-sized venues and is buying uh, he's raised a bunch of money and he's going to buy a 51% stake in all of these venues to keep them from going under and then you know because it's how he works he's going to fuel these venues with those B and C level touring acts as things begin to open up. Cause he sort of knows how to do that. He's, you know, he's been, he's been around the block in this way before it's a company called save live. And uh, it's, you know, I mean, the point is to bail out these venues and in doing so create a, an e like in the end right now, if you're that B or C level touring band booking your tour is a pain in the neck because you've got to negotiate mm. with each club it's not like you're calling Live Nation and saying, okay, cool. What houses do you have? Let's plan a schedule. Great. Not that that's easy, but it is able to be done at least, you know, on the surface with one phone call. If you want to go book 10, you know, mid-sized venues, you've got to call 10 mid-sized venues and negotiate with them and their schedules and all that. This save live thing, I think it's going to pave that path for uh, for acts to be able to do that with more consistency, with more predictability, and I and I think more safety, right? Because they will all be kind of overseen by this this Save Live uh, company that Geiger's creating. So I think that that's the place I'm looking is when that starts to happen. And I it would not surprise me if you know the Live Nations of the world are following that too and saying, okay, like. It did that. They put that together. Did it happen safely? Yes. Okay, great. Like, let's go. You know, now we're, now we're good. Yeah. So I sent my band a note today after watching the Biden press conference today, you know, where clearly he's focused on it. Yeah. He's got a plan. You know, these are good things, right? You know, like, like you said, right now, we don't know. Are we waiting for herd immunity? Are we waiting for a vaccine? You know, what, what is going on? Right. And there's no plan and there's no timeline. And, and so I, I would say most Americans are just, you know, and I don't, you know, I can't speak for other countries, but, you know, most Americans are just like, you know, he, he keeps saying it's leaving, you know, it'll, we're, all, we're rounding the corner, but clearly we're not a hundred thousand cases a day here now. Sure. So, um, so I sent my banner note saying, you know, what? I think this is pretty positive. I think, I think, you know, he's clearly talking about it. He's clearly focused on it. Then we get this news of this, of this vaccine that, I, that I think the soundbite was some of it, They'll be ready to start in December, but large scale will be about third Q3, which is July, right? Yeah. And so I, I'm thinking that um, I would imagine that that rapid testing things will will become very very plentiful. Biden used the term you know like pregnancy tests, and um, and I think I think like I want my band to start thinking about we should probably if if rapid testing comes about fairly quickly with a new administration. And then, you know, we spend March and April getting back our chops. I, I would like to think we may play starting in May at the earliest and August at the latest it would be my plan. So from a musician standpoint, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm planning for right now. If I was looking for the opportunity as a venue person right now, I would start thinking about these things as well. Like, yep. Right. Cause yep. you, you want to book and you want to promote and you want to, you know, you want to have grand reopening parties and you know, you, there, there is opportunity to arise from the ashes of all this. Totally. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I, I well, technology, you know me, I'm a nerd, right? So technology is our path to this. It, me, it's, I know, <laughs> I know you might not figure that out, but, uh, <laughs> So, you know, I, I am very keen on technology being the path through this. Uh, obviously, I've been very bullish on testing, and and so far that seems to have worked. You know, it's not perfect, but, you know, it's it's better than, well, it's better than hope, isn't it, as a strategy? So, uh, it, but a vaccine would be even better if it's an effective vaccine like you know and, and up until out literally hours before we recorded this there really hasn't been any concrete news about a vaccine concrete right yeah and even this is like very very it's still like concrete that's that's you know like you could get your feet stuck in this so 
uh, it's hard to say, but it's certainly the most promising vaccine news that we've heard. And that's not surprising, right? You know, it takes time to develop these things. It was going to come. It was, yeah. it's going it, yes, it, it to, yes, it stands to reason that this was going to come at some point. And okay, now we're seeing the first of these. Great. They seem to think that by, you know, summer, they'll be able to have this ramped up. And that's like, I see no reason that that couldn't be true. But I also see, you know, the reasons that it might be delayed further. And also, you know, what does it take to get everybody on board with taking a vaccine? Like there's a there's several steps involved here. Right. You know, water, horses, leading, those sorts of things. <laughs> so I'm like I'm bullish on technology I'm I'm hoping that it's whatever the technology is that gets us through this. I'm hoping it is something that could be for next summer. But I'm like I said before, I'm hedging my bets and saying that it's going to be the following summer. Like it's going to be spring of 22 where it's like, OK, we're on the other side of this. I don't want to say return to normal. I think that's that's a psych for me. It's a psychologically unhealthy mindset to have. I, there's no going back. It's going forward. We've got to get through this yeah. and we'll, whatever the other side is, but, but the freedom to touch each other again, to, to quote David Shannon, right. When he was on here, that, that would, I think that's spring of 22. I, I think, cause I think it's going to take a lot for us to be comfortable. You know, think about being at a concert general admission show uh, where, you know, people are just packed in next to each other. Like I would, I would lose it right now if I were mm -hmm. like, that would not be a comfortable thing for me. What's it going to take for us as a people? And there will still be, even on the other side of this, there will still be people that are no longer comfortable in there. But what does it take for most people to be comfortable in, in that scenario? And it's going to take some, some tests. I don't mean COVID tests. I mean like litmus tests like, well, yeah, we did it. And guess what? There was no outbreak. Oh, Okay. Well, Let's maybe again. maybe our art wine festival, yeah. um, you know, stuff is is that litmus test. That's I mean, it. It's the smaller scale things. Exactly. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, I was thinking also about about you know getting my band out of mothballs, right? So you know, if it's, <laughs> I mean, that's literally going to be a year since we all played. Yeah. If you know, if I don't rehearse again until February, our last gig was February fifteenth. Rhythm section played once was right. fun. Muscle memory was tested and passed the test. But, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, the whole band. And then, you know, we have a discussion that I've started a thread about, um, you know, you don't want to just recycle our old show. It's a new world. We want to go out there with, you know, invigoration and new music and, you know, do something. And some of the guys say, well, let's just give people the old favorites. You know, that's what they want. We'll be able to get up in business. I'm like, what else do we have to do right now? Like, like, yeah, work on stuff. <laughs> you know, let's talk through stuff. Let's use the time efficiently. How how are you? Any of you in your bands having those conversations? Yeah. So we had a, a fling Zoom call last week for the first time in probably six or maybe even eight weeks, if I look back uh, at things, and it was really good for us. We a few of us have just kept in touch via text, but it's, it's like inane stuff. It's like, you know, somebody found a video and like, let's share this. It's not yeah. talking about the band or music. And it was really good to get, you know, the five of us just in a zoom call for an hour or whatever, and just chit chatting. And we all vowed to like, we need to make this happen every, you know, if not every week, every two weeks kind of thing so that we just stay in touch because we all really enjoyed it. We didn't talk a whole lot about music, but we talked some and, you know, we acknowledged that it was March when we last rehearsed here in the studio. And even mm -hmm. it was like that week where days later the lockdown started, you know, we were, we were like, so what is this thing? Is this like, do we really need to worry about this? You know, like <laughs> it was that conversation. And, and then the answer turned out to be, um, yes. You know, so yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I think it's really important to keep that, communication up and uh, whatever opportunities you have to be engaged with each other, if you can get together safely, you know, or play outside or, you know, whatever that is, just those little, like that, that thing we did Friday night with Uptown Celebration, quite honestly, I feel like that might be the thing that saves this band going forward. I, I was Ooh. not convinced that that band would survive uh, through this because, you know, not because there was any problems amongst the members, but you know, everybody's lives sort of splinter off. It's just how it goes. 
And having that core little thing like, oh, right, we can still do this. There were discussions of, oh, man, yeah, when we're on the other side of this, you know, Gary, you're going to be able to book us for whatever you want. You know, this is going to be great. You know, like those kinds of things and having everybody sort of rekindle that flame a little bit, I think uh, certainly makes me more confident that that band will make it through, which is which is great. You know, that is great. Yeah, we have. um, But some bands won't. Like, it's like, that's just a reality. Um, yeah. Yeah. This weekend, um, I, I think I shared a couple of weeks ago that one of our guys has not been well. And um, his wife is having a little outdoor thing, like two or three neighbors or something like that, and and asked Simon to play at it. And Simon said, hey, you know, do you think we can have some guys drop in to raise raise our guys' spirits? So I put the note out and it looks like more, much more than half the band is going to show up for this. And so Excellent. I just, you know, again, it's, it's those, th- you know, yeah, you got to get your chops loose, but it's that, it's that fiber of connectivity that again, it makes a band a band different than just a collection of guys playing notes. And totally. I, I, I overthink this quite a bit. Like our, my guys are not looking at our Slack as much as, as much as I would like, you know, I'd like them all to be checking on each other, not me, but, you know, to know that that connection is there. Cause I thought it was part of the vibe that made us a different, you know, group than a lot of other groups. And, and, um, you know, so I, I worry that, you know, I get it. People are taking care of their families and that type of stuff, but you know, we've always said the band is like a family. So, you know, are you guys really in on this or not? And so we'll see it what takes, it's like. It takes, um, intention. It, you know, having gigs means that, or even just having regularly scheduled rehearsals, but you know, all those things that kept our bands in sync with each other automatically. And I I don't like to use the word automatically without an asterisk because I realized, you know, somebody has got to be booking the gig. Somebody's got to be doing it. Right. But like the machine stopped. So they're all the things that existed prior that kept the machine, you know, that kept the group together don't. So what is going to keep the group together? It takes a different type of intention. Maybe that's what it is. You know, it certainly takes intention and attention to book all those gigs. So now since that's not happening, you know, focus that attention and intention on just keeping people, you know, having fun and you know that like a zoom call with every, you know, have a beer or whatever, just chit chat with each other. Don't sweat the, I would say don't sweat the music stuff. Um, right out of the, you know, don't just make it about hanging out with each other because that's the thing that always happened around the music. And that's what made your band, your band. Right. So get the hangout happening and then let the music sort of organically come out of that. Uh, The discussions will come up for sure because it's what you all have in common. So, yeah. That's good advice. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I think, I think we figured it all out. Paul, let's I, I, I feel completed. <laughs> <laughs> let's get back to work. Let's get back to Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was nice to have like an outdoor warm, like sweaty little thing, but it, it was 39 here this morning. Yeah, I know it's, um, I, I don't know. I took my watch off cause otherwise notifications drive me crazy while we're podcasting, but, uh, it was, you know, 65 here probably when Good I came up you. to the studio. Yeah. Yeah. We're having summer in November. I'll take it. Cause I know we're going to have, months of not, you know, wanting to be outside or being outside, taking a lot of extra effort to bundle up and, you know, all that good stuff. So. You know, when my daughter went to college in in Boston, so California girl going to Boston. So we went back and looked through the college, you know, in the middle of winter, I wanted her to see what a real new England winter felt like. And it was dang cold. And she thought it was cute. You know, she thought it was, (laughs) Oh, right. So, you know, the first winter, you know, getting around in the, in the winter, she was like, yeah. And then as winter goes on longer, you know, goes into February and March and maybe even part of April, she was like, Oh, that was a long time. Second year. She was like, Oh, winter's coming. Oh no. <laughs> you oh, know, no. She, like yeah. that, that winter depression type thing she was preparing for. Yeah. Third year, she just got out of Dodge. She goes, I'm going to go do my <laughs> semester abroad. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. Yeah. No, that's the right. That's the thing about, about cold weather. And I think this is important for all of us that are living in areas with cold weather to remember is it's not the first snowstorm or the first day of, you know, sub freezing weather. <laughs> it, it's the, the 60th day of it. Right. Like it, you know, I love, I'm kind of weird, but it make it like, there's reasons for it. I, I like the snow. I like it when, when it snows here, but I don't drive anywhere, you know, even pre pandemic, 
I work from home. Like, so my office is across the driveway from the house. Yeah. I got to put on boots and maybe a coat and a hat to get to the office, but that's it. You know? So it's not that big of a deal for me when it snows. And I, I like that muffled silence outside, you know, like the feel of the snow and all that, but it does start to get old when it's end of February and you're like, okay, like two degrees, isn't that much fun anymore. Can we get past this? And that's why I always enjoyed South by Southwest in March because it was usually my time to thaw out because it would be 80s in in Austin at that point. And Macworld in January was usually decent That's weather, true. right? That's true. Yeah. Yeah. You might need a jacket or something, but it was definitely a break from the oppressive cold of the winter. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and CES in January is the same kind of thing for me. So, yeah. Right. You know, or NAM in, NAM in January. God, we got to go to NAM, man. Not this year because it's you know virtual, but um, but Yeah. You gotta go. You gotta go. Nashville, maybe Nashville next summer, huh? Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Oh, we'd yeah, have a good time. Man. We would have a good time. Oh, let's do it. If it happens, let's do it. Yep, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's enough. Right. All right, you man. Good? Yeah. good stuff. Good. good luck, everybody, in your in your opening up plan. Start to think about it because it's going to happen. I feel good. It's going to happen. I I appreciate and share your optimism. I, I although although my schedule is still a little different, but that's okay. Like it's you know we're good. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Yeah. Thanks for listening, everybody. Again, feedback at giggabpodcast.com. Thanks for your email, Fred. And I know we have emails from a few others of you in the queue here. So yeah, thank you. That's good stuff. We love it. We love it. Really, truly. I love it when you folks get to define the topic of the show. That's that is my good. favorite thing. It really is. And thank you. What's the other thing? Always, always be performing. That's right.